and welcome back to our Ellipse Unskilled podcast. Today we have with us our very own Gonzalo Garcia from Ellipse Solutions. Hi, Gonzalo. Hey, Gigi. Hey, hey Gigi. how are you doing, guys? <laughs> Good. Gigi, yes. Mikhail, I'm blaming Mikhail for that. But Gigi, yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm going to let it. It I happens in life. It. I worked for a company <laughs> where, you know, you, that you have to shorten names when you're, you're creating email, you know, naming conventions, right? And the company was owned by some folks who had a really long last name, like 10 or 12 characters. So they went with first name and then the initial of your last name. And there was, yeah, there was, yeah many people took on that, that nickname. Like there was a guy named Bob Allen who became Boba for life, B, Bob and then the A. So, <laughs> so he was Boba. This, if it, if it worked, it, was, it worked really well. Uh, you know, mine was boring. So, but wow. yeah, but... Bobby, yes, you know, just Bobs. boring, but Bobby's, yeah, nah, Bobs. nothing, no big deal. There. Or you but could yeah. have been BS. I could have, <laughs> yeah. They wouldn't let me break the convention. So Boba, yeah. Gigi, it's it's fun how those things come around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too funny. Um, well, Gonzalo, do you kind of want to start us off by telling us a little about yourself, your time here at Ellipse? Um, sure. It's, um, I mean, I've been with the company, what, 10, 12 years now? Um went um yeah exactly um as you can tell i'm from mexico i'm back in mexico i, I am from mexico i was in the us now i'm back in mexico um leading the office here um uh, where was i yes so <laughs> how did i how did i get here so uh i i mean i i normally let mikhail do the story because he he likes you know he he, Part he likes it. to yeah to tell, right yeah, he loved that exactly. build up like he just got all these stories in his little storybook that he likes to tell like let me turn to the page on Gonzalo <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> chapter you know, fourteen you, know, you, you, you you have heard the story <laughs> so um, yeah I was working for an end user and then um, suddenly I got a message from I forgot his name by now. Um, can't remember the name. He was in. He was hiring uh, back then in 2010, 11. Sorry. So uh, he was trying to convince me to join uh, what was back then the Duraback project. I didn't know he, he was. He was okay. fuzzy on the details. And I said, "Well, you know, I'm. I have a full time position. I'm not looking for anything like it, like for a project." And just out of curiosity, I said, um, hey, where, where is the project? And he said, well, it's near the board. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't, who don't know, back in 2012, back in 2011, 2012, the border was a bit, in a bit of a problem, mm -hmm. <laughs> security-wise. So I said, yeah, no, <laughs> hard pass. And uh, then that was the end of it. And a couple of weeks later, I got a message like, hey, how about you come work for us? And I'm like, okay, let's talk. <laughs> and 2012, February 2012, uh, me and my wife, we just drove all the way to Dayton. So you were living in Mexico at that point? Correct. I was okay. living in Mexico. Yeah. Same city I'm right now, which is Monterrey. Uh, Monterrey. That's the Monterrey. Monterrey. Yeah, you get, get the R I had a friend yeah, who couldn't do, do that. It. It, it was a constant source of embarrassment for him. He couldn't roll his R's. He would try, and I, I, he put too much, like he was putting too much thought in moving his tongue. So he would go, I said, go ahead and try it, Shane. You know, brrr, and he'd go, blah, 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 blah. You know, he'd make this, like, stop, stop yeah, doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got to let it, it's got to come don't, natural, don't, man. Don't. <laughs> don't push it. Yeah. Let it come natural. Brrr, you know, let it come natural. So it was a point. Yeah. I, if I wanted to tease him, that was one thing I could tease him. Right, about. right. For those who doesn't know how to write it, it's like Monterey, California, but with two R's. That's it. That's it. Very nice. And I guess so. I guess that's kind of is that how you got into IT slash dynamics originally, or um, were you into well, that? Well, no. If you wanna, if you wanna hear the story of how I got into IT, you have to go, go way all back. The way back to, you have to all the way back. That's like chapter to five. 19... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's like chapter two. Well, yeah. Chap if, if if the book is my whole life, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> First you're born. Yeah, but if, if you're talking just specifically about my interest in IT and how I went into, you know, this area, 
you have to go all the way back to 1993, 1994. So 1993, Savannah, where, 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 where was you born? Where, where? 1993, I would have been like negative six. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, yeah, I'm old. Yeah. Anyway, so 1993. That's, a, that's the prequel. Like this, like, you yeah, know, that's... Like talking about here. She, was, she was in the prequel. Yeah. yeah. So it was uh, Jurassic Park. I'm pretty sure everyone knows that movie. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, maybe a year later, uh, some publisher releases a Super Nintendo game for the movie, you know, at the time, video game. Um, and uh, I asked Santa Claus, hey, can I get this game? And sure enough, December 25th, I have it under. The Christmas tree, and then I start playing, and of course, you know, it, it, you you play the game, you don't think much about it. Uh, but there is a there is a scene, or there is a part in the game where you go into a building, right? And it, it's the in, in the game, the building is a raptor pen, right? So sure enough, it, it is like a you know uh, round thing. So you you walk around the building, and the, it it has windows. And the windows, they have this, you know, little pixelated sprites of jungle. So you will assume that it's to look inside the pen to where the raptors live. And, you know, I'm like, what, 10, 11 then? And, you know, back then, you, you, need, to, you need to contextualize the situation there. No internet, no nothing. It's just your imagination and that's it. That's it, right? So I look at the... At, the, the little sprites of the jungle, and I'm thinking, why wouldn't the raptors just jump into, you know, from from their pan, break the window, and go inside? And then, you know, the only source of knowledge you have back then is your dad. So you go, hey, dad, why is it that there are no raptors jumping in, breaking the window? And he says, well, it's probably because the guys who made the game didn't program it. And I'm like, what do you mean programmed it? Do you mean like I can program this stuff? I can make this thing happen? <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> right? It's like an epiphany, like, oh, you can you can create stuff on the computer. You can make it your own. Of course, you you know, it 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 requires it, back then you don't know it, but in your mind you can think. Oh, I'm just going into the computer and do it, right? But you know, it takes more than that. But that that planted the seed of, you know, the desire of learning how to use computers, the desire of going into all this, you know, whole universe of being able to create your own stuff. And you know, that that was it stuck with me through mid middle school, high school, but then you get to university or college and then you enroll in the IT program and then you start learning stuff and then you realize yeah it takes more than just you know programming to create a game you have to have advanced math and you know all these sort of things so you know you you start pivoting into what's more useful or you know less entertaining but you which is business, and then you, you you learn to to love it. So you pivot, you enjoy what you do, and then eventually, at some point, someone will call you <laughs> and say, "Hey, you want to come work to program an ERP?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Yeah, that's <laughs> that's right an there. awesome story. So do you do you still have the video game? Do you keep it? Nah. Oh. No, yeah, I, I was forced to sell them because I wanted the, the Nintendo 64, which was the next console. And then my mom <laughs> said, you're you're not going to keep all these games. You're going to you have to sell them. And I'm so, like, with, yeah. Well, with, with eBay and Etsy and all these, do you ever have the desire to go back and just, you know, rebuy that, that console? Yes, and game? actually. And, and <laughs> I'm, I have, on, I'm getting ready to make a bid yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> I have a Super Nintendo uh, laying around that someone gave to me. And I'm, you know, I... I, I'm probably gonna get to it at some point. Yeah. Open it, clean it up, and it, uh, according to this person, it works. It's just that right now it's just sitting there. So yeah. So my daughter just did the same thing. She's she she was uh, born in '98, but she, um, you know, and we didn't have Super Nintendo game. I don't think we even had any of those. But she played video games online probably 
more yeah. than anything. But she just bought like like this generation is definitely going retro. Like she only watches VHS. Yeah. She she only uh, so she has a video a VHS player, you know, VCR. She's got and she just bought a Super Nintendo. The Super uh, Nintendo. Yeah, <laughs> and so she's playing all those. And then I was just asking her if she wanted. I I have my original Atari. 2600 which is one of the Ooh. you know one of the first kind of bigger you know yeah, home yeah. video game consoles you know before we had pong too like just on the tv like we had a tv that had built in <laughs> pong there was a button you pushed and it turned the tv from tv to pong it was pretty any of the paddles that connected it was pretty sweet so you could play just pong would just go pink pink yeah. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, but but yeah, how exciting when you could just turn your TV on and do that. I mean, it just seemed exciting yeah, yeah, yeah. at the time. Anyway, exactly. I'm, I'm gonna you know crank up the and my Atari 2600 still works. Still have some of the original. I love that, playing. That's um, a feat. Keep yeah. Those um, what was oh Space Invaders is my favorite game. It was the Space game Invaders. I got for Christmas along with it. So Space Invaders is my favorite game to play and there's a couple of hacks i discovered by goofing around so that was fun no oh, really <laughs> yeah 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 if you start it up a certain way you get extra gun power you know, it's like, you know. Um, exactly. yeah what a great story to how how a person gets you know kind of yeah, excited that, about doing you something know, in life it's, it's the small things that get you into this uh, you know and and it i mean you and uh, like i said you may not end up uh, you know doing what you originally thought you were going to do but in the end you stick with computer stuff and you learn to enjoy it. It pulls back the curtain to, I mean, you know, problem solving and, and, and creating exactly. and, and yeah. you know, analysis. It's all, you know, it's, it's just a lot. It's all related. It's, yeah, part yeah. Of, it's part of the formatting of our heads. Yeah. So you joined Ellipse sometime in um, then 2011. 2011. And, yes. And yes, were you straight up, were you, were you just doing development at that point or, or did they hire you as a, you know, um, you know, kind of talk about what your role was to start with and then kind of yeah. what now. When I, when uh, Jeff Lurie, that's the name, Jeff. Ah, Jeff. I knew we'd yeah. figure it out at some point. Yeah. Just yeah, get, yeah. get that brain cranking this morning. I mean, the, the first interaction was with Jeff and then eventually Mikhail came into the picture and, and you, you know, Mikhail uh, wouldn't trust me right away. Right. Because, you know, who is this Mexican guy? Anyway, so, uh, they, they give me some tasks to complete. So I was just working at during the day and then in the afternoons, I will just be doing programming stuff. So uh, after a couple of months of, you know, showing that I was capable enough, I guess <laughs> they decided to make the bet and, and start the process of, of the, well, it's the migration process. Yes. Yeah. Nice. And just to be but, clear, Mikhail doesn't trust anybody. When I got hired on, yeah. I, I had come from a, 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 you know, an executive level vice president position uh, <laughs> right. as a director of IT. And, you know, I still didn't get released into the wild for like six months. So <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is a ramp. There's a ramp up period with Mikhail when it comes right. to anybody <laughs> getting and, out and there. And to be honest, I, I don't think he trusts me even, even after four years. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're still not sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm... I'm not so sure about that. I mean, sent you out of the country. I, don't, I mean, the, how much, you know. Exactly. <laughs> it was like, I, I don't want this guy anymore here. Let's right. go. Right. A little too close. Dayton's a little yeah. too close. <laughs> <laughs> too funny. Um, so within the 12 years at Ellipse, so you mm -hmm. went back to Mexico, what, two and a half, three years ago? Because. To. It. June, J July of this year is going to be two years now. Wow. Because fun like fact, 20, when I yeah. started at Ellipse, that's when Gonzalo moved to Mexico. So he was like, <laughs> see ya. Yep. Yeah, yeah. She, she's right, like, I, mean, I don't know. Town. Savannah may have yeah. thought like, why is I, I'm joining and this guy is leaving. What's happening? Right. This company's going to hell. They're hiring Savannah. I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it, it was just a coincidence. Uh, I, I remember. I, I think the first time I saw you, Savannah, was, was on the, the farewell mm -hmm. launch. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the name? Bravo? El Toro? Con Condado, um, I think. Condado Tacos. No, it, it is a thing. It is a restaurant. It's a, it's a Mexican restaurant that it's next to Whole Foods there in Center Mill. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember the name. I've probably even seen that. If it's Is it close to the office? I go to that Whole Foods. Yeah, it's, it's close, close to the office, office all the time. Yeah, I'm sure mm -hmm. I've seen that restaurant. I can't think of it. You know, yeah. I, I whenever I visit, I'm, I'm like, I, I like to go to get groceries like for the room as opposed to buying um, I'm trying to like think a of fast food for <laughs> it's meal. Come up later. 
Yeah. But anyways, do you want to kind of talk us through um, that prop, like what you do now in Mexico, what your role is there? Sure. Yeah. So right now I am, um, and I'm going to blame Brent on the naming. Yeah, but, of course. No, that, that, of course. So I'm, I'm the manager of technology. That's the position. Uh, but in general, I mean, besides being the manager of the office, like being in charge of, you know, dealing with the dealing with things that I wasn't used to, like doing the payroll and those kind of things. <laughs> um, fun. Yeah, fun. Uh, I'm also <laughs> I'm also project manager. No, I mean, it's fun because it's it's just yeah. new stuff, right? So janitor, to, you know, uh, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you have to clean up, you have to do the payroll, and then moonlight as a project yeah. manager. For that. <laughs> uh, no, it, it it you know it's it's a manager position, so it is basically you know all those management stuff that probably Savannah is probably you know more. Uh, you know, in touch with those things that you and I, or at least you and I were before, but um, it, it's basically just that, you know, dealing with the employees, you know, uh, approving their vacations, all those kind of things. Of course, I don't, I don't do like, I, 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 I look and supervise those things because, you know, if, if you try to do the payroll, I, I don't know how to do it. I don't want, you know, that's the accounting we have an accounting firm that does that, but I had to review and approve stuff. Right, stuff. right, and you know it, it's it, that that when I go into this when I started this position, I'm like, yeah, how difficult can it be? And then suddenly, oh, we have to run the payroll. Oh, it's today. Oh my god. Ah. <laughs> I hear you. I you know, I got I've got uh, Samantha knocking on my my teams every Tuesday morning. Like, hey, it'd be really great if hey, you got your yeah. time sheet turned in. Like, oh, God, exactly. I, like I, I I I don't know why. I just I, I need to get myself a, a a double triple reminder or something. Like yeah, right. let me morning, just morning. yeah. That somehow you mm -hmm. can write me a Power Automate flow that won't stop beeping until I literally <laughs> push submit on. You know, it's like exactly. starting on Monday morning, it just starts beeping some annoying sound. Like, reminders, ah! reminders. Until I click the submit button on my payroll. Exactly, and you know, at the beginning it was it was fun because I had to learn all this stuff. Eventually, you learn to delegate. Uh, but but that 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 happens, that that was uh, that's mostly what I normally do. I try not to do it as much because, again, I try to delegate um, uh, as much as I can. Not because I cannot do it, simply because it's. Um, it, it, I have other more important things to do, like doing, uh, you know, architect work, yeah. or, uh, project management stuff, and of course, um, you know, when uh, when the the guys they they are young guys, um, fresh out of college, uh, they come with questions of and there to help as well. Yeah, that's that to me was my favorite part of, of running a department. I have had, you know, we've, I've, we've talked before, I was, <clears throat> I'm a developer at Nature. I, that was my path, you know, was through IT and into development for 13 years in X++. So, and trained mm -hmm. a number of people in, in, you know, it was always my goal to get them trained, you know, find their strengths and weaknesses quickly and get the yes. trains to delegate because they are going to learn faster. You're going to have a better resource. And, and like you said, you've got, you know, higher level things to, to you can work on too. So it's good to get those your your team up to speed as quickly as possible and rely right. on them where you can. Yeah, that that's one of the most fun parts, like yeah. learning, like le learning to understand the, the strengths and weaknesses of the people yeah. you work with and you're supervising. So you can empower them and encourage them to, you know, you, you have to grow, you have to you have to speak up, you have to be assertive, you have to. You know, don't 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 just jump into it right away, uh, but also don't overthink. Yep. Um, because you know, overthinking is it, while it's good to be cautious. It sometimes it just freezes you up. Yeah. And you end up not doing things. So. Yep. I hear you. I've worked with I've worked with folks that are just you know it's. <laughs> yeah. Six months in, you're like, we gotta make a decision. Come on, you know. I, yeah, I, like I, said, I, yeah, yeah. I feel like I've gotten to a good level of, of you know, good analysis, but knowing there's is a cutoff where you've got to just make a decision and, and hit it and go. And then, yeah. And then if you make a mistake, you learn. And hopefully, you bring that, you fold that into the next time. You know, you've got to have exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and just listening to what I've seen. Anything. 
Go ahead. Oh, I was just say somebody was saying there's an old adage, you know, you can you can spend all you know all you know month making one perfect clay pot, or you could make you can make as many pots per day as you can and learn from the process. And by the end, exactly. when you do it that way, you'll have a better pot at day 30 than you will if you focus on one pot for 30 days. So learn, exactly. you know, get out there and yeah. fail and learn and fail and learn. Mm -hmm. I feel, I feel like um, people, I mean, and again, they're, they're fresh out of college, so they, they don't have experience, you know, in, in, in all of this and, in, 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 you know, working for real. Um, and I feel like sometimes they, they, it's not like they are afraid of making a mistake. They are afraid of the consequences. Mm. And I tell them, you know, consequences will come. So you have to deal with them one at a time. Don't be afraid. Um, and if, you know, if make a decision. And if it comes to be like the, the results of that decision are negative, mm -hmm. just accept that there will be consequences and you know deal with them learn from them and carry on speaking of consequences so like i said i'm a developer um by trade you know started developing in 2007 ish although i was mm -hmm. doing like i was doing user interface stuff in, in ax 3.0 even in 2003 like they they tasked me to, to put together because if you if you've developed in three Point oh or earlier, all the form mm. development is very um, manual. You like you have to plot <laughs> yeah. things. If you want a button to be here, it's got to be plot. It just you know. So I did a lot of the graphical like form interface for our for our customizations and and changes, right. or even early on. But then you became a, a you know full time developer. Can you think of a time when you look back and and you just you know from like current day Gonzalo to like early programming where you just said this code is completely nuts what the heck was i thinking like you know how often does that come up where you go back and see like 2000 and, and 12 gonzalo code and go ah i've learned so much that's a good question um that's a good question i i think that the, i mean i it, I don't think I've ever it's gone back and, and seen my own code. Yeah, it, it hasn't. <laughs> it, it's, it's not like I don't like to look at my own code, but you know, it, it's you, you work in a project and then you move to the next project, and it is you know That's sometimes true. you it's, don't so I'm go thinking back. About, yeah, I'm thinking about it where you know my end userships. I had the opportunity to probably go back more than you would be able to go back and look at your code. Um, yeah, the, the, the closest thing I, I, I've been to have that experience of what the hell I was thinking was when I unearthed my compiler from college. Okay. And I had, I was brave enough to look at it, you know, and, <laughs> and it, it was like, I don't know, probably 20, you know, 17 years after the fact, because it was recent. Yeah. And I was looking at the code and I'm like, oh. Yeah, no. I mean, of course, it's 17 years of, right. of experience. And I guess the other the other moment I I've, I've come close to look at my own code is when Dictor um I, I well, let me a little bit of context. So, at some point um in 2013 when I was already in the US, they I went to work for a surety, but I was working on site. So, all of 20 2013, I was working there in Nashville, then went back to Dayton. And then two years ago, Victor says, oh, you know what? The other day I was working for Assyrian. Oh, nice. Yeah, I found your code. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear it. La, 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 la. <laughs> no, no, no. That's funny. And, and then I said, was it bad? And he was like, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. <laughs> okay, well, that's not that's not scathing. I, I mean, I found yeah, a couple yeah, of things yeah. where I'm like, "Wow, I made a that was weird," you know. Although I was a pretty good programmer, I just there were a couple of things like I've learned, obviously. And you do so much coding, it's you can't. It's hard to go back and like repair or maybe things. You yeah, know, yeah, you know, there's some major inefficiency, um, right. which I did do. You know, like I would go back at, at times and revisit processes, like you know, just for grins like you run run a sql trace on a process and see how it's you know what, what the performance is like and then and then go yeah. back and dig into the code it's like oh i could i can definitely improve this you know the the, the code here or whatever yeah now the, the thing with programming for erps is that 
I, I would like to think it's you are less inclined to do those sort of like refactorings because you know you you, you develop something at some point with whatever knowledge you have at that point in time and it works you you know you end up in a position where the code works it does yep. work fine i mean nothing no no, no big issues yeah you might want to you may you may want to revisit it you know five years later it's still working i mean if you start poking around uh you may end up breaking it and the thing with erps is that if it works don't fix it don't don't i mean back away yeah it's it, it, it it's yeah exactly it's like <laughs> that because you know it, it, it is a transactional system it's, it's not facebook it's not a social thing it's yeah. not a game right you know You're something right. breaks and then someone starts losing money so mm -hmm. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That is or, that is, is that, that is the truth there. Yeah. yeah. That is the truth. That is, <laughs> is that the truth. saying? Yeah. Oh yeah. You're right. You're right. It's like you don't want to go back if it's not yeah, if it's not broken, maybe just leave it on alone. Yeah, maybe it's just fine. leave it alone. And of course, if if it's really broken, it, it will show up. I mean Yeah. Like you said, if it's a performance thing. Sometimes uh, you don't know. You, you, you might have like you know early on your company's running a small amount of data through a process. Exactly. Yeah. And uh and your code works fine, and then all of a sudden your your, your data needs change or your process changes, and boom, yeah, yeah. you uncover some inefficiency or some you know some maybe issue with that particular project, and you do have to go back and take a look at it. Um, yeah. It's rare, but it does happen. It just you know that, that kind of exactly, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it does happen. That's that, I will say that that's one of those moments where you yeah. have to look, go take a look back and say, oh yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yep, you bet. Fix it. You bet. We we came across that again in crazy ways. You know, I didn't. I wasn't there at the beginning, but um, I'll, there were folks that didn't put in like um, um, character limits, or you know, like on fields mm -hmm. and stuff, or or like using um, you know, uh, I can't remember the term for it, but you would create a you know a, a, an actual um, variable for that for that field so that you could change the character limits or whatever and yeah exactly, and then all yeah. of a sudden your data would change and your reports are blowing up and everything and, and because somebody hadn't carried that kind of that little construct all the way through um, <laughs> and you and you're, you're, you're instead of your po used to be 10 and now went to you know 15 because you had to you had to increase it and you and you have some data in inconsistencies throughout and you have to go back and fix that stuff it, it happened to me with uh with the project recently actually and the 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 challenge, they, they wanted a report that had to basically drill, uh, automatically drill to transactions backwards to find the original cost of the item. So think of, um, you know, you find you find the, the, the transaction, the sales order, and then you need to go back all the way from, you know, basically parsing or going through all the transfer orders, all the movements, all the counting, all the transactions, all the way back to where it was purchased. And of course, you don't know where, you know, where it was, what, what, what is basically the purchase order and the price for it. And, you know, well, you, you, there is no direct correlation, or at least it was like that. There was no yep. direct correlation between the, the moment you were selling it from the moment you were purchasing it. So, the um, the trick for that report it that it was that it had to be recursive i don't know if you're familiar with recursion so it's basically you have a function that calls itself multiple times um so for each of the transactions we had to basically find the previous transaction and then do the recursive call on that transaction all the way back to where there were no more you know transactions to trace backwards and um everything was fine and then it wasn't and <laughs> it was it was not like uh it, it, it was not like the 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 report was error it was the whole system was coming down <laughs> and this is this is finance and operations so <laughs> let you know it, it suddenly oh the system restarted oh i don't know some you know microsoft did something and then it restarts again and then people start getting 504 error, 502 errors, gateway errors, like the system is down. And then you go into the logs and realize, oh, 
something is crashing the system, like completely bringing it down. What's going on? What's going on? And then suddenly we realize someone is trying to run this report. And I'm, okay, why, why is this happening? So, you know, you go through the whole process and then you realize that there someone got, the, it got to a point where they were trying to get information from, for a particular sales order, but it was going all the way back to, through the transactions. And at some point, someone transferred the item from one warehouse to, the, oh, to another and then back to the original warehouse. So the system was finding a loop there mm. and it was going recursively in, you know, yep. find this transaction. Oh, it, it, this is the originating transaction. Oh, going back and then, and then. And we were basically causing a stack overflow in the system. Yeah. <clears throat> you had to start thinking, oh, we need to put some limits into how deep this thing can go. And, yep. and you just fix yeah. it and quietly don't say anything. It's like, I don't know. Microsoft, wow. it's a bro. I don't know. It's not me, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, in this case, in this case, the, the IT manager, he is knowledgeable enough to say, uh, oh, I, I understand what you're saying. So what do we do? Well, we need to put a limit. Ah, okay. So let me talk to business because they they are gonna they they, they are not gonna be happy if we put a limit in the transactions. <laughs> be happier than their system, well, right? <laughs> yeah. So that was that was a convincing point. Like, well, yeah. you, what do you want? You want like the full history, or do you want the system working? And I feel like it's awesome now. I think Savannah can leave this conversation and actually start her programming career. Yeah, She's learned so much yes. just in the last. I'm Ten minutes. Yeah, you hope you're still getting in. Kind of like, fell silent. Yeah, upskilling. Because... You're in a moment of upskilling. It's like you're like you're you know just learning yeah. at the feet of the master here. <laughs> yes. Exactly, Mr. Gigi. <laughs> Mr. G. Oh, Mr. Gigi. All right. What else, Anna? What else do you want to know about me? <laughs> we could be here all day. We could. Yeah, yeah. we should. I, I'm going to go ahead and block the rest of my calendar off. No, yeah. I'm kidding. I got it. <laughs> It's like a full movie. People need yeah. to watch instead of a podcast. So, Ramon, are you, exactly. Gonzo, are you traveling up to Denver? I can't remember if you're one of the yeah, speakers yes. coming to Denver. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, good. Yeah. So we'll see Actually, you I just got months. the reservation email. Awesome. Yeah, was, so did I. Yeah. I was getting concerned about that. <laughs> yeah, I think she was. I don't know what she was waiting for, but yeah, we're, we're yeah, I got mine as well. So yeah, super excited to get that thing kicking off. Uh, how long will you be here? Do you know? Uh, it says here I am. Um, 13 through 16. So I'm, I guess I'm going through the whole event. Yes. Okay. Good for you. Very nice. That's and exciting. I do have a presentation. Here. Yes. So, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I, I, it's going to be fun. Yeah. I, I've, I've been, I'm not keeping this a secret, but I'm, it's kind of a secret, but I'm just figuring out how oh. I can, I can, yeah, how I can create like a, a secret party bus that, you know, of, you know so I can take ah. it since I'm hosting, I just want to, I want to make sure I people see. who show up who want to see and experience, you know, things around Denver. town that I can I can set up some cultural experiences. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. sort of like a like a double decker with uh, yeah those touristy it could, it, buses. That, I don't I don't have the money or means to get that, but I can put chairs on top of my car if that if that helps the experience. <laughs> that works. We'll double decker that. Just, yeah, I'll just I'll strap them on with bungee cords or or zip ties or something. I'll get it. It'll be yeah, safe. Yeah, just don't just do it right. like we do here in Mexico. Just pick up truck, put everyone in the back. In the back. No seat belts. Hey, we did that. In, we work. did that in America yeah. too. Yeah, it was yeah. just Kids definitely. Kids interstate yeah. should be fine. Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> no problem at all. Yeah, no problem at all. That's exactly how we do it. And all can just hang on to the roof of the car. I love it. Yeah. 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 I, I'm gonna on sit the on the. On the uh, I'm gonna sit on the. How do you call it? the door? The, the flatbed door. Yeah, yeah. Like, let, let it yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. So in the back. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna put. It's like uh, I'm gonna put my hand on the on the little the, latch. The, the, yeah, the the hinges that are on the side there. The hinges. Yeah, yeah, yeah yep. exactly. Yeah. Nice. It's a plan. You don't even have to <laughs> rent a bus. Exactly. I know. It's, I'm, I'm uh, just thinking. I like how it's evolving. Every time I mention, it, I get me. I get few few new ideas. It's gonna be pretty sweet. I there can't wait. Go. Yeah. That we reminds me, I need to get health insurance because I don't have health insurance <laughs> in the U.S. anymore. <laughs> yeah, you might want to get, you know, you know, riding on my 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 uh, after hours double decker secret bus does not include health insurance. It's at your own risk. Always. Yeah, you have to sign a waiver. <laughs> You're just definitely going to be a waiver, video print, waiver. Print the waivers. Print the waivers. <laughs> yeah. 
Too funny. Uh, Bobby, do you have any other questions or should we go into our rapid fire? Yeah, so we, we got, we're, we're trying something Ooh. new out. We got rapid fire. Um, so Savannah's going to throw some rapid fire questions at you. Um, is it for yeah. me to answer too or just Gonzalo? You guys can both answer. We All can right. go Gonzalo then Bobby. Or I don't, I, yeah, we'll give it to Gonzalo first. I don't even remember the questions. So yeah, okay. that would be perfect. Cool. Nice. Okay, here we go. So the first one is summer or winter Olympics? Summer. Summer. Very nice. Me too. Uh, what's your yeah, favorite the, color? The, the, the winter Olympics are, are for rich people. I'm not. I'm not a rich person, so. Yeah, why, I don't know why. <laughs> I, said, I don't relate to to the winter Olympics. <laughs> I should say winter. I'm I'm in like a, the winters, like you know, capital in Colorado. We have a lot of winter sports. The X Games. That's true. Yeah, I don't know why I said summer, but I did. I don't, Do you I like, ski, I, Bobby? I don't. I I've never. I haven't skied in Colorado. I snowboarded one time mm -hmm. and I hit my head a lot and I didn't like it and I just didn't do it yeah. anymore. Oh, oh no. Man. But I run and summer. I don't know. I, I like summer. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's summer fun swimming. Fun. Everything like that. It's cool to watch. Yep. Okay. Next one. What's your favorite color? Purple. Purple. Yeah. I'm I'm contractually obligated to say purple. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> There are wrong answers here, just so you know. <laughs> All right, I would get a shock I, 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 with that built-in shock color that Brent made me wear now since I've, since I've you know, converted us to purple. I, I definitely exactly. have to say purple. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next one. Who do you message on Teams the most? Oof. My wife? Probably Savannah. Oh, on Teams, on Teams. Sorry. I was thinking WhatsApp. But no, specifically Teams. Yes, yeah. like work. You said me, Bobby? Yes. <laughs> We're pointing oh, at you. Mikhail, <laughs> I don't know. Mikhail. Well, yeah. now, now that I think about it, you know, probably I will say uh, I think um, I think Mikhail, Mikhail, not not Mikhail Reitman, but Mikhail. Stanko. Ah, mm -hmm. gotcha. Because he he is the mentor of some of most of the guys here in Mexico, so I have to be in touch with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. He is also. Um, I, he's a lead in some of the projects I'm working with uh, as a project manager, so I have to talk to him a lot. Nice. Makes sense. Actually, I actually have, have, have just a few people pinned at the top of my team. Savannah is one of them. So I have Savannah and Brent and that, maybe that maybe makes sense. That's smart. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah, otherwise, it would, you know, just like, like to have those at hand. Yeah. yeah. I what do you mean you can pin people? <gasps> you can pin people! Yes. You didn't know this? Hot tip, hot tip. Now Gonzalo's learning. We're all learning something here yeah. today. <laughs> That's yeah, if you just, true. If, yeah, you just if you click on the little dot thingy, maybe, or there's definitely a place to pin people to the top. Super helpful. Nice. There you cool. go. Okay, next question. Have you ever worn socks with sandals? Yes. No. no yes, of course. What? <laughs> Comfortable. All right. It, it is I do, convenient. To be fair, I don't wear sandals a lot. Like I, it, I have to force myself to wear sandals. Yeah. Crocs every once in a while. Definitely with a pair of like, I'll call them my outdoor Crocs. Like if I want to go yeah. from my house to the mailbox for a second, I've got the Crocs by the front door. Yes, those are. I, I've never worn Crocs, by the way. Really? Sandals, yes, but yeah, I, I've Crocs never worn Crocs. are really worn comfortable. Crocs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like you I said, just so. easy to slip on. Easy to slip on, yeah. Just walk right into those. They're things. not very cute, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely goofy looking. But people, everybody likes them, so everybody's goofy looking. So it's fun. yeah, I, I have a, a bright yellow pair. So. Nice. Mine are Harry Potter themed for some reason. <laughs> oh, yeah. very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Griffin, okay. I like Skechers. <laughs> they are not paying me anything to say this, but I like Skechers. Skechers are. I love Skechers. Yeah. Skechers. Yeah. We need some brand deals on this. Some podcast. purple Skechers. Heck yeah. Purple yeah. sketches with Ellipse Solutions. Yep. Yeah. Logo. Yeah. Keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, last question. And this one's a little geared to Gonzalo because for those of you who don't know, he's kind of predicted a few oh. things in Ellipse Solutions future. No for um, Gonzalo. With the purple, purple branding being one of them. So I've heard. Um, yeah. So what is your predictions for Ellipse in the next five years? Putting you on the spot. <laughs> um, start implementing or, or basically take on customers here in Mexico. Mm. Yeah, that, that's nice. my prediction. Yes. Okay. And we'll put that in the, the other day. Now that you mentioned this thing about me predicting stuff, the other day I was talking with uh, 
I was talking with Gregor and Mikhail. And um, what happened was that, I don't know, have you seen Dune 2? I haven't seen it yet, nope. No? OK. No spoilers, but this is a, this is a small spoiler. So here in Mexico, the, the biggest um, movie theater chain is called Cinepolis. Right. Okay. And there's actually a Cinepolis in Dayton. Um, so they have a global presence in India, Latin America, as few in the US, um, Mexico, Mexico, of course. So we sit down with the, you know, they, the, the movies about to start, and then they put like an ad, right? Uh, there's a lady walking through the desert, and then she ends up in a Cinepolis, and she's about to go in into the movie theater, into the theater, and then suddenly Timothy Chalamet shows up, and hand you know he hand hands her a bucket of popcorn. I'm <laughs> like, what what what's going on? Timothy Chalamet in there? All right, and then Zendaya shows up, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> oh, it's probably some you know it, it's probably some. Uh, you know, ad that a company in the U.S. recorded and, you know, it sells the rights and each company, each movie theater chain adapts, you know, the puts the logo somewhere. And then Austin Butler shows up and Florence Pugh shows up and I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> and it's a, an actual Cinepolis ad. Cinepolis paid all these wow. actors. To, to to do this and I'm like this this is the most unreal thing I've seen. That's anyway, hilarious. So you no, sure that wasn't a scene it, from the movie? I, I remember no, popcorn no, no, no. in Dune One. They had you know he had right. the bucket. Yeah. So uh, you know it it the it, it's the first day so it, you don't see much of it on the on the social networks. Then it, it starts popping up in in Twitter and Facebook like people are reacting to this and I'm like whoa okay. And then I learned that they did the same thing for Barbie, and they uh -huh. paid, uh, you know, this Margot thing. Robbie and Margot Ryan Robbie Gosling, and yeah. Ryan Gosling. I'm like, wow! So I had this idea, and I send Gregor and Mikhail. If you think there is, you know, it, it, that Mexico there it doesn't have enough money to pay for an implementation, just look at Cinepolis. Look at what they did. There is money here. There is yeah. market here. And and then we start having this conversation like, you know, oh, Gonzalo predicted that we were going to be using purple and then in a few years we will be expanding, which we eventually did, right, Mexico and, and Romania. And then I tell Gregor, you know, Gregor, I have to tell you a secret. It's not like I predict this stuff. And then and he says, what, what do you mean? And then I tell him, are you familiar with the foundation trilogy? The, the, the books from Isaac Asimov. And Mikhail doesn't like science fiction, but Gregor does. And he immediately gets the idea, oh, yes. I tell him, I'm like the mule. And Mikhail is, what do you mean the mule? No. The mule is a character in this trilogy that has you know, some mental capacities to adjust feelings and, and sway people his way. Mm. And I tell, I tell Mikhail, you think all of this happened just out of coincidence? No, I'm the mule. I've been planning this for ten years. You will be. You will. Yeah. Purple. You will. <laughs> you will expand to Mexico. <laughs> exactly. The Gonzalo so, mind trick. I love it. So Savannah, it's not like I'm predicting stuff right now. I'm the mule. I am You're making it happen. We are gonna, I love it. Yeah. It's a mastermind. It's happen. It's it's just you know I'm the master of puppets i'm yeah i'm behind everything i remember it was like two months ago you said something and just offhandedly i will be on your podcast I, yeah exactly <laughs> you forgot to erase that out of your memory yeah. <laughs> his victims that's funny anyway so yeah i'm, I'm not pre i'm not predicting pre i'm not predicting well i'm predicting it <laughs> I like it. We're we'll edit some of that out just to give it just enough. So we, we'll leave that that air of mystery around your predictability, uh, uh, exactly. your, your prediction abilities. <laughs> My prediction abilities, yes. Too funny. Well, hey Gonzalo, thanks for uh, taking the time to join us today. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Very much. Sometimes I ramble and 
you know, I, I have I have ADD, so if, if you, you need to cut some of the things I said because I was just trying too far off. <laughs> oh, no, it's good. We'll, yeah, yeah, no, we're going to ride. Be, we'll, have, we'll have two versions. We'll have the, you know, the, and then the uncut, like director's version. The uncut, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can look for that on Blu-ray, you know, for future Blu-ray, cut. yeah. <laughs> Is it, is it, do they make Blu-ray? I feel like nothing's getting put out anymore on DVD or Blu-ray. No. It's like yeah, it's such a, a non-thing with streaming, but <laughs> somewhere there'll be a director's yeah. cut. We'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was great. So, yeah, cool, thanks again. And... Yep. Thank you so much. Yep. We'll talk to Thank you guys you later. Guys.